My name's Ian Gordon. I'm an ex gilly Started fishing for salmon aged eight. I currently run a company called Spay Online where we organise salmon fishing trips all over the world and casting instruction. My name's Tony Black. I'm a daily at Murthley in Strathman Estates. I started uh, as a daily in 1986 at Dunkeld House where I was for four years before coming to my present job at Murthley. I'm Sandy McIntosh. Uh, I'm a gilly on the River Ann. Uh, I started my career uh, in 1966 when I was age 20 uh, when I went to Gilly and worked on the River Borgie in Sutherland and had my first salmon then. From then I went on to work in Lewis and several of the estates there including the prestigious Grimmerster. Uh, but in the meantime I've been gilling on the Tay uh, and fished a lot of rivers throughout Scotland for salmon. Um, I'm now on Gilly on the River Ern, I've been there for the last 22 years. Hello, I'm Grant Kelly. I have been fishing since the age of 12, with a real passion for it, so it's 51 years I've been fishing for salmon. I'm well, down here on the mighty Tay today. I've come down from a much better river, as to be said, the Spey. I'm not sure these guys would maybe agree with that, but uh, I've come down from the Spey this morning to interview a group of friends and colleagues, um, all of which have been gillies here for like all their life. I mean, it's a, it's an amazing, amazing river, and incredible that you can have people here that are working from a young age. Tony, mm -hmm. when did you start? How old were you? When did I start gilling? Uh, I started in 1986. 1986. Lots. To that, to this? Lots, lots. You used to have um, parties for a full week. Was that party parties? Like drinking parties? Aye, uh, uh, no, both, parties uh, both. Uh, both uh, uh, no, you used to have, you, you had your, uh, your, your party would, would arrive for a full week. Yeah. Uh, that never really changed for a number of years. I uh, know your day legs. Okay, you know, just okay. And you're Sandy, you're, you're in the Ern, which is a big tributary of the, the Tay. Tell us a wee bit about the Ern. Well, uh, we fall under the auspices of the Tay Board. It's a smaller river. Uh, I've been Gilly on Kinkel for 22 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we too have noticed a difference when I came first with parties of people coming from about August onwards. And the same people, the parties would turn up every year uh, and they would be up for a week or a fortnight. And in those days, because the fishing was so desirable, we persuaded them to take a week in the spring if they wanted okay, to try okay. autumn weeks. But that's largely gone. Their sons took over the lets and so forth. The modern man is so busy that he spends most of his lunchtime with a tablet in front of him. Oh. And he's going down the pool and he's got this excrescence <laughs> on his ears. And he, when a fish eats, he's got to mind whether he's going to listen to the phone or, or play the fish. And he usually drops the fish and the phone, uh, but I could have told him so. But that's the way it is now. And as Tony was saying, uh, it's much more stop and go. We take people on a daily basis. Uh, it's a lot better than nothing, but uh, it, it's not as it used to be. <clears throat> I'm always minded of what I say at this stage, that when sh the world was falling apart just before the Second World War, Neville Chambers then absented himself from Downing Street for a fortnight to go and fish the knee. And he was not to be disturbed under any circumstances. Uh, the uh, most meanest ordinary person has got to have a mobile phone, so he's been, been contacted 24-7 sure, these days. Sure. And uh, I think we're slaves to that. Uh, we are. It's not the best, I have to say. And, and personally, I don't like it at all. I see, I see younger gillies actually on it all the time, oh, yeah. and it really, really frustrates me that one. Yeah. Grant, what about you? The Erich, I believe you're the oh, yeah. you're the main man up there, eh? Well, I spent a lot of time up there. I probably started fishing here when I was twelve. Mm -hmm. Salmon caught my eye at that age. Uh, mm -hmm. Went to the hatchery. And 
Uh, it's like, like, yeah, Tell us a wee bit about Eric and the type of fishing that you were doing on there uh, uh, when you started up. Are you allowed to say that? You know? Yeah, well, I suppose everybody <laughs> did at some point. I would spin for some. Yeah. Um, shrimping, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah
November, December time, dead fish, yeah. you know, spawn, diseased ones, kelps, yes. lots of them. I, I used to go down my wee gaff and you know, gaff them out, have piles of them, and sit and look. <laughs> I, I used to sit and look at them, and then my granddad would say, right, Mum, we'll go for a walk. This was in Kinnear, mm -hmm. where I was brought up. And I used to go for a walk down mm -hmm. the bank, and granddad would look down at me, I would never make eye contact. I wonder what would do that. And he'd be looking down and be waiting for a reaction. This pile of fish. Because I used to gather them all up. And, aye, huge things. Aye, there was just so many salmon. You just never thought about them. No, it would run out of the way they yes, have. Definitely. You know? definitely. Um, yeah. Aye. What about yourself, uh, Sandy? Are you, are you, are you thinking the same thing? Yes, very much so. Yeah. We, we're about a third of what we used to get, uh, even yeah. seven or eight years ago. That's uh, cold. That's a catch. And um, in ideal conditions, you know, you'd see the, 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 the groups of fish coming up. Uh, you, you go to the river and good nick and go out, and you hardly see a fish. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you've got to gee yourself up in the hope that there is. There are fish there, as indeed there are, but they're nothing like as plentiful. And uh, as was mentioned previously, if the number of casualties and uh, on the banks is any indication of what's there, it, it, it's a pretty sad story. Yeah. Uh, we had a lady who used to walk her sausage dogs up and down the river. She would complain to me, uh, Mr. Mandelosh, <laughs> might you have to do something about all these dead fish because my dogs gorge them. Yeah. Then they come up to my cottage and they puke up over my axe <laughs> nest. I'm very sorry about that, but, but uh, uh, I, I don't have enough time to, to, to do that. But, uh, we don't have that problem now. Well, that's right. We, we, we had a, we had an interesting on the back of that story at, at Mercado, uh, the state, exactly the same thing, mm -hmm. exactly the same mm -hmm. thing. And our boss made us go out and actually bury them. Yeah. And we would bury them on a daily basis. Yes, mm -hmm. you would go down yeah, to the yeah, tail yeah, of the yeah, 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 yeah. bury all these fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you'd come back the next day and there would be as many yeah, fish yeah, there again. The next yeah, day yeah. it was really smelly. Yeah. And I remember queer dog people went to the yeah, yeah, yeah. um, and, and uh, aye, oh. aye, exactly the same. Oh, uh, nice uh, level, no. <laughs> no. 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 Perfectly trained oh, dogs. Oh, oh. Yeah. So, when I, when I talk about the population of the, the Tay, I always, sadly we've not got George Ways today, but I'm going to quote this quote that he gave me, that I've quoted many times before. And and he said that in 1969, do you, you'll maybe know that this figure's right, uh, Tony, but in 1969 he told me that the Tay, the number of fish caught on the River Tay, was 128,000 fish? 103,000 caught in the nets. That's it. 103,000 caught in the nets, and then and then 26,000 caught by road line. Yeah. He also told me declared declared declared, declared. declared. Both yeah. both yes yes, and, yes. Yeah. and uh, there would have been one or two that wouldn't have been declared. Yeah, I'm been sure been, yeah. I'm sure around that yeah. time as well. Yeah. But what 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 he said to me was that he reckoned that that year that there was just as many fish mm -hmm. in the river. Yeah. Still in the river. Oh yeah. So that would have that would have made the count of fish on the river day. Sandy, would you agree? You, you agree. remember back to that no, time? I you just look like a young lad in the field. That's very nice. I'm going to keep on taking the bills. So <laughs> uh, I, I spent two seasons uh, as a netsman on one of the netting stations, right. uh, and that was just about that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the, the the numbers of fish were phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There were 36 commercial netting stations run by the uh, the Tay Salmon Fishery Company, mm -hmm. uh, and we uh, we would set about getting them out. You'd have a shift of five hours, and you'd put 11 or 12 shots in. If there's a shoal of fish in front of you, you'd start to get them straight away, and by the end of your shift, you'd got them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got yes. them all, and they would go away down to Billingsgate and so forth. Um, and there were plenty of fish. What there also wasn't at that wasn't at that time were any seals. Uh, our gaffer, like every gaffer, was a ship with a Lee Enfield 303 rifle, and if a seal was daft enough to stick its head above the surface, a shell came towards it straight away. And a seal was a very rare thing in those days. Uh, that, uh, unfortunately, isn't the case now. And they come up the river. Yeah. We are 16 miles from the sea, and the fish are spawning on the gravel at the bridge there, and the seals are in amongst them. And to stand idly by and let me get on with it. I think, I think as well, we're doing so much for conservation with, with salmon. 
now and to have these seals in the river at a time when we know the population is nothing remotely like as as it once was. In fact, the population is is at a dire level as far as I would be concerned. Yeah. Would, would you would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. And to have a to have a, a, a an increase in population of seals at this moment in time, so the balance is just so wrong. Yeah. You know? And that's why I think we really need to address this predation problem. And speaking about predation uh, guys, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm one of these lads that thinks that Goosander is my number one, en public enemy number one to the salmon for me, uh, Goosander. I, don't, I, I never like Goosander because yeah. we know that there were no Goosanders. Yeah. Uh, 1880, there was none in the yeah. UK, absolutely none. Yeah. So all our salmon have evolved without that amazing predator. Yeah. So uh, tell me about your experiences with them in the tail. Have you got a lot of them? Uh, you, know, you, know, so, <laughs> you can see why it's needed. If you get one of these and same with the cormorants and the gooses, yes. uh, you open their, their stomach and it's like John West sardine does. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and particularly when the smokes are going down and it's crammed full of them, well, that's your future. That's it. Um, the, the, some of them are quite good for fly time purposes, but that's about the only good thing we can say about them. Uh, but uh, there are far too many of them. There were rare, rare yes. things a while ago, that, that, that there's flocks of them now. Very good mothers. Uh, they, uh, you only have to look at them in a bad way and they discern that you're, you're giving them the EOI, they scatter away. But sometimes there are ways of defeating them. Uh, I've, I've seen the same as well. If, because they're, they're not a long-term indigenous bird, mm -hmm. then they've not got a specialised natural predator. No. That's why I, I believe in the UK here that we have big families of them. Yes. No, so she'll, she'll, she'll raise, like, if she uh, lays 13 eggs, mm -hmm. she'll, she'll raise 13 oh, yeah, eggs, you know, yeah, every, yeah, every yeah, single yeah. time. Yeah. And then if something happens to one of her, uh, Pals, she'll she'll actually adopt. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. So I, I think they, they become a massive problem personally for me. And what's your experience well, with the we have quite a lot on our river. I mean the largest number I've counted in a group, mm -hmm. and this is crescent, I think it was more out of hundred and eleven. Hundred and eleven Gusanders during a small block. Again, for me, if you if you think that these these birds uh, are, are going to eat, uh, and we can be conservative. I'd say like, like twenty fish uh, oh, every, easy. every day easy. each. And it's, easy. And it's not just you, far, you start far. making that ca calculation as to the damage that we're doing here, and it's it's colossal. I remember doing it, and it was. Millions of fish that were yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's a, 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 it is a it is a big thing. I, th I think predation certainly up in the sea. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly seals, the same. Seals is a big one. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. you're eating your smokes going out. Your adults coming back. Yeah. Um, but again, they went from forty thousand in nineteen seventy eight yeah. down the British Isles. Yep. Yeah. Yep. To, to what now? Four hundred thousand. So they're saying. So they're saying some yeah, some so people argue about the numbers, but yeah. one thing we do know is that the population has yeah. been like this. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they were probably persecuted uh, by the whalers up until the forties, and then the numbers were there. There was there was yeah. ten men employed in the TS. Yeah. Yeah. And all they had done was cull seals and cormorants. Yeah. 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 All that said, you know, as far as as far as the economy of salmon fishing is concerned, guys, um, do you know any study done in the tea that's yeah. you know? Oh no, I'm listening. Uh, the yes, yeah. Uh, what what is salmon fishing on the tea worth to the local economy? Do you know? Something like fifteen million. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I I remember I remember doing something with the Scottish government when it, some years back. They were doing a they were doing a, a study of um, the decline of salmon, and I remember the figure for overall for Scotland was like a hundred and um, what was it? It was eighty million pounds. Seventy-two million in nineteen eighty-six. 
Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Work. Yes. And, and then that was study. that went up to 2003. It was two. Uh, what was it? 130 million. And now, 20 years later, it's back down to 80 million. Yeah. And so that 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 sets a trend, you know. And I think it's it's a worrying. Well, the price of fish has come down. It has to to attract. Yeah. People to to come and fish or to come for a day out. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And and so I think from a Gillian point. Of we're lucky that the people that are that haven't fished long, that are just starting now, accept salmon fishing for what it yes, is. Yes, yes. Yeah. And if they see two or three fish, that's, that's a lot of fish. Uh -huh. That's yeah, a lot of fish yeah, for them. Yeah, and we're yeah. sitting there all glum because we've only seen a couple of three. But that's what I think it's always good, Tony, to have that turnover of younger people, oh, and younger girls, oh, oh, kind of enthusiasm yeah, for the job. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's just one of that thing. Speaking about clientele, mm -hmm. so how's how's that changed over the period that you've been fishing, Tony? Uh, oh, gee, I so, I mean, for instance, I mean, I, when I started, we had um, just Sir David's guests for most of the most of yeah, the year. Yeah, yeah. Just him and his family came and his friends, and that was it. There was no like paying guests or any of that in the main part of the season. Yeah. And it was all uh, like majors and generals. Yeah, and ah, yeah, there was a lot of that. There was a yeah. lot of that. But they're still not as high ranking as Gilly. Eh? No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> He's a field marshal with a lot of them. Oh, I've, I've had quite a lot of them, and that's what I tell them. I just tell them that's not a very high rank general. What do you mean, Tony? That's quite a high rank. I says, well, it's not as high as Gillian. <laughs> what about you? Well, I had a wee survey when I was, uh, before I came to, to work in, uh, on the day in the air. Uh, and uh, I gave in on the Grimmer staff uh, oh, yeah. for a while uh, in the summertime. I would get there about late May and stay till the season ended. And the syndicate of about 23 members were, were all very well to do. And you uh, you addressed them uh, as a matter of course and their associates as my lord because 19 times out of 20, that's exactly what they were. Yes. Uh, and that was very much old style and very proper. Uh, they would turn up a time, a very short day, and a lot of the time was spent in travelling. Mm -hmm. But the runs of fish were so enormous yeah. that uh, it made no difference. I remember the first time I went out with a guest, uh, he had 16 fish for his day, and he fished about three hours. The shoals of gross were phenomenal. They turned the water black, uh, and uh, some of them uh, were a bit naughty now and then. And I remember uh, Lord Strathmore, Fergus Bowes line, was late turning up for supper one night because he was fishing the, the kelp pool and wanted to get his 100th sea trip in a day. He'd not done that before and he was late. But uh, uh, the, he was carpeted by the, the secretary uh, of the syndicate, Colonel Bradford, and he was fined a case of, of Margot uh, to, uh, to just put him right. And that went to the estate sellers. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, you had to turn up in your dicky bow by a certain time, but it was all old style. I think it's relaxed quite a wee bit, you know, but the runs of fish are much diminished. Uh, there, there is, I still think in Sydney was, a fish farm in Loch Roag, and that put an end to the abundance of salmon on the Grimmster. Okay. It was a bit better this last year, but a pale shadow of what it used to. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Yes, Spot. yes, yes. 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 Um, that, that's really interesting. I, I, I've, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a great hatch believer in hatcheries myself, you know, and it's one, it's something that I know that in certain size of rivers, uh, most definitely works yeah, in an yeah. sense, no question that it does. I think there's uh, some people that think it might do damage to the stock and whatever. On your river, Grant, what's the, what's, what's the feeling that you have on that? Well, we're definitely down on mm -hmm. the we used to see steady runs of fish. You could, I always took my week's holiday because mm -hmm. I'm a working person. Yeah. And it was always the last week in April. Mm -hmm. You could guarantee mm -hmm. that there's good runs of fish would come out. Yeah. Didn't need an awful lot of water, but they would appear and they were fresh, fresh, fresh. Lovely to see. Now the runs have become sporadic. Mm -hmm. We could have good water and not see fish. And we don't understand why. We have a lot of different things going on in other rivers, so mm -hmm. compared to the whole body of the team. 
do you think do you think that that's just uh, subsequent of uh, of the fact that there's we just know so many fish there or do you think they're coming at a different time some people think that the fish come at a different time i mean it changes yeah yeah uh, we always used to get fish in February and they were generally teeners. Yes. Uh, March were smaller fish. Mm -hmm. And then into April the size would start to increase till we got into the last week of April, the first week of May, we would see good sized fish. Yep. And then we st we're getting uh, two sea winter fish in June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two sea winter fish in June. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we get lifted water. And yep. these, these are fast travel fish. Yes. Yes, because uh, the temperatures are going by there. But there's been changes. February fish was always interesting. Mm -hmm. We can add them on the open days. So yes, 15th of January. They were bigger, bigger fish. Oh, yeah, well fed. I need proper, proper summer springers. Yeah, we used to get fleecy yeah. winners. Mm -hmm. In the lower part of the area. Yeah. What are you doing? Have you seen the changes there? And what did that tell you? Because I'm interested in that the Eric's got these big fish in February, mm. or had the big fish in February. Was that the same for the main stem of the river? Aye, yeah, there was always good fish in the start of the season, was January, February. You always got these high teens, 20 high, a lot of 20 pounders. This is going to high way back, you know. Mm. Um, I remember the, the f in 1988. Aye, be 1988, uh, I don't care how the first five fish I caught averaged 20 and a half pound. <laughs> the biggest one was only 22, but they were all up to, you know, 20, 20 and a half, 21 and a half, 21 and a half, 22, and then I got 20. You know, that was the first five fish, and then we got an eight pounder. And then you'll give me an eye, and then the next one was an 18. And then after that, I kind of remember, like, but, you know, that, that was by the end of January. I always just think of the big picture. When I hear stories like that, I just think of the big picture, and I think, what what is that worth in today's value? Oh, I mean, because because my business revolves uh, oh, around yeah. that, and it's, uh, I mean, if you, if, if, if you could offer someone the potential mm -hmm. of that type of fishing, yeah. it would yeah. have been the value of that now is yeah. through the roof. You cannot believe. Hey, you, know? you used to go out in January and you, you always believed you were yes. going to yeah. Yeah. get a fish like, you know. Some someday would get one. Not every day, sure. But you would still have that belief today would be the day. Yes, yes, you know? yes. That's the type of And then fake 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 for some reason would, would Quiet and off a wee bit because mm -hmm. I think you had these fish that came in and uh, uh, we, we caught the following year's fish we had caught in October some years, yes. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And if if our season had went on through November, we would have been catching yes. these, yes. Yes. these fish. Mm -hmm. So these these fish are already in the river. Some yeah. people call them winter fish. Whatever you know. So you would have them already in the river. You would catch them through the first couple of weeks of the mm -hmm. season and then it would sort of quieten off a wee bit yep. and then you'd come into March and then it was just you fish would come you, in then. every day you were going to get fish you know, if you didn't Aye. get one you were disappointed yep. Yep. You know? yep. yeah that, that winter that fish are great fish oh, yeah. super super, super oh, absolutely the yeah, best yeah, I mean, yeah. and it's interesting again we'll talk about the economic value mm -hmm. of these fish yeah. because I I have been lucky enough to fish up at Punoy mm -hmm. in, in North North yeah, Russia, yeah. and they have they have fish called Osenka fish, yeah, yeah, so they're yeah, yeah. ice yeah. fish they call yeah, them. Yeah. And so they come in sort of August, late August, but September's quite good up to about mid October, yeah. and then they sit there under the ice, yeah. and then they come out again. So these fish will be exactly yeah, the same, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. the same. You know, yeah. and they're going to spend spawn yeah. the following year. Yeah. So if you seen. I'm talking about the runs of fish yep, in the yep. year and the Erne so yeah, yeah. The Erne, as far as I remember, was a back end river. Yes, is that uh, right? It is to some extent. It's not so marked, but there are still a few grey bats going about. Um, not as many as we used to have, but we had a, a three or four, not a little longer than that. Uh, we, we had a, a happy occasion when two or three of them made themselves available to us, and these are fish 30 pounds. Brand new. Yeah. Uh, Coincidentally, cockfish, 
Uh, and quite a, a battle dealing with them. Yes. Now, that, that's sufficient for a lifetime for a lot of folk. Uh, and it, I, I remember fishing with Dunk Glass, uh, the redoubtable Dunk Glass, a legendary school lunch time, uh, on, on Burn Bay. Uh, and we, uh, he was commercial, shall we say. We fished very, very hard and fished into the darkness. You'd start in the darkness mm -hmm. with torches and yeah, fish yeah. there. And his target at the back end was always at least 20. Mm -hmm. And we finished with 19 and then he hooked this thing in the darkness. Uh, we, we had several good fish, but this was a, just about 20 pound brand new. And we looked at it and, and we said, that's not going to spawn this year. Mm -hmm. A brand new uh, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. That's chugging up to lock T. Yeah, It'll yeah. spawn in about 30 months. Yes, yes. And, and you know, the most perfect fish you could get. Yes, uh, but, yes. uh, there are there are these, you know, uh, the vestiges. We one or two in the last week of the season of this year, quite large fish, fresh run, uh, and nice to see them. But uh, whether, no matter what time of the year you get these fish, I remember about five springs ago, this uh, wee party came out, uh, two brothers and one of their sons, and the wee laddie went up to fish one of the pools, and 15 minutes into his sound career, he hooked this thing with a uh, little assistance from his dad, he landed it. And there's a photograph of him in the hut with this fish being released in excess of 20 pounds spring of the month of April. Uh, and I said to him afterwards, I said, no, no, I think we ought to quit now. Uh, because if you continue this arcane activity, you will discover what you've achieved today and the chances of repeating it any time sooner or more. Uh, I've never seen him again. You know, so he's uh, he, honestly, he, he took that aboard. <laughs> What about yourselves, guys? If you tell you similar sort of stories, youngsters, oh. funny ones. I've got to get your thinking oh, time. So he had an eight year old here, and his father took him fishing. It was a few, a couple of years ago. And uh, the river was a right height, and so it was spinning around him. <clears throat> he's shown my excess time. He shouts. He's never been fishing before in his life. He spent most of the time picking roots off the trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted a seven pounder. He said, first day fishing. And he got so enthusiastic about the, the joint of club and, and all that. Just, mm -hmm. Dad, I want to do this. And, and uh, we see him having to do that. So that was a trivial for it is, it is, it is, it's, it's giving the youngsters a chance yeah. to get out there when there's yeah. one or two fish around, you know. Yeah. Um, seen them. Absolutely, absolutely. And it was great. I think in the past, guys, it was magical these fish jumping about because that, that, that created so much interest in fishing and the young oh, laddies, wow. I mean, I know myself, it was, you know, you could sleep at night. No, you yeah, can't, no, you could not, you could not, it was just so exciting. Half my time standing on the bridge yeah. and yeah. watching the fish yes. over the weir, I can do that for hours as soon as I can, at the end of the year, yep. they're spawning, I can stand and watch it for hours. I think the spawning, the spawning fish are interesting as well, and that it's, it's nice. But now that we've got technology like this, we can yeah. take the youngsters, schools, whatever, to the spawning burns and yeah. show them yeah, it's oh, right. yeah, the spawning fish. It's and talk place. through the story, it's a great time when you're standing mm -hmm. watching. I think standing watching fish spawning to talk, to talk the next generation of potential fishers mm -hmm. through, the, through the whole life cycle mm -hmm. of the salmon. Mm -hmm. uh, that's great. Um, I'm going to ask you guys about run timings. Mm -hmm. And so, have you noted in the past, I don't know, 10 years, a change in the pattern mm -hmm. of when the main lot of fish come into the river? Yeah, I've seen changes. Yeah. Um, see the slow build up that always the peak month is April mm -hmm. uh, on the air. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if we are water. So it was a spring river that spring and, and grills. Okay. Oh no, yeah. well, grill shams they used to get. I mean, it was so good the locals used to stand on the runs into the pools with landing nets mm -hmm. the, 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 there were so many. Ah. Uh, the runs have changed, they say they've become sporadic. We've now got them coming into May and June. Uh, we're certainly well fed mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. But there's less of them. Yep. What's you doing? It? Ah, April, May, June. That's it. For us, yeah. Yep. In July, a few grills. And no back end fish though? Yeah. Not to speak of, no. We got one We got one in the last week of the season this year. Absolute spanker. Mm -hmm. 15 pounder. Um, and that was it. That was it. Silver ones for a yeah. you know. 
as far, uh, I mean, the reason for the, the question was that the Scotland in Scotland we've got a fantastically long season. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, we, can, yeah. we can fish for salmon for well, uh, the yeah. opens of the top here. Aye, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So yeah. from there, all the way right to the end of November in some places. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's your thoughts on fishing as late as that, Tony. I mean, I know, I know we're on the, the, the tea. Aye. Right? Um, no, I think we're fine here. I think we're fine on the tea. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and you, you, if you start shortening seasons uh, from a gillian point yeah. of view, yeah. uh, Starts affecting job stores. If you if you cut our se you know, season back to August or something, and they'd have a lot of part time gillies. I think, I think yeah. it's my it's definitely my experience of legislation in any shape or form. Mm -hmm. If you want to change it, it's really difficult to change yeah. it back. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Yeah. So it's just for the at a local yeah, level yeah, for yeah. people to adapt to yeah. what's happening at that particular yeah. moment yeah. time. I, I think anyway. Yeah. Um, I think some of the top of trivia things, Aye. particularly close to this point of it, I would be in favour personally of shopping two or three weeks early. I mean, the special one. Yeah. They're there, we're not going anywhere. Aye. 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 They've made it there. Yes. You know they're going to be there. So not going to be there. I think they're yeah. right. You know? But that management can be done at a, at a local level. Yeah. You know? It doesn't need government to step in. No, no. It yeah. should never Aye. be no, it should it government to do that. Yeah. Speaking about government, um, there's another little point that, that uh, water abstraction on the spay is an issue. You know, it's an issue in the upper part of the spay and interestingly, it affects the day as well. Yes, well you know, yes, um, by the way that the whole thing works. But I'm not talking about the spay, I want it from you guys' perspective. And do you think it's made a, a big difference um, when you have these abstraction schemes and we don't have enough water running down through the rivers? Tell me a wee bit more about the T system. Uh, Grant, I'm looking at you. I know, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, this is an ongoing thing. And, uh, we certainly have been fighting for a long time to rewater a two, two and a half, three mile section of the area. Yes. Um, and it's all about abstraction uh, to work a turbine, a fish farm. And so we are in process through the different system and try and highlight this. I think SEPA, and this is my policy, and I don't like talking politics and all this, no. but I think I don't honestly think I'm fit for a purpose. That's my words. I would say that you're, you're, you're yeah. close there, definitely. Yeah. It's certainly close to my own thoughts on it. Yeah, yep. so I, we have a, a drastic problem in Blairgetty. It's been going on a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, fish farm itself, they know the history and what it's capable of doing and what it is doing to our smoke. You know? yeah. So, so we're working directly for that. So do you know just how much water they're taking out as a whole to the river system? How much they're taking out? Well, so there's, are they taking 10%, 20% or are they taking... If we, if we have a dry, yeah. almost dry riverbed for two miles, that tells you they're taking all no. of it. No. Yes. That is, that is for me, criminal. That no, 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 that's coming. That yeah. is totally coming. It is. It should never be happening with an iconic species such as this. No. They give so much enjoyment, pleasure, and and, and this so is much what, to the economy. To yeah. do that is coming. I think this is what's causing this, uh, this sporadic runs because yes. at some stages they can be held in sure. a way beyond the use by day. They should be out at sea. Yeah, yeah. So this could be what's making the runs mm -hmm. sporadic. <laughs> But uh, the over abstraction on there uh, is horrendous and it's frightening to watch every yeah. year. It's sad. Yeah. What about the main river, Tony? Because I mean, the mighty day, it's, it's big, you know. Is there any sort of water issues, pollution, abstraction, that type of thing? And do you see any problems um, associated with that? My biggest one is hydro. Okay. Yeah. Like, like the Lockery Dam right. has a huge effect on. The catches okay, um, and the, when they release water, as soon as that water hits with your fishing, it just puts the fish right off the take. Cool, is that because the water's coming from the bottom of the dam? Yeah, to the yeah. yeah. so you're getting stagnant water. Yes, yes, that, that's only again. Yeah. I've, I've 
I take a water down the children twice a day, and I used to take it as soon as that rise would hit us. And you can't pick up a temperature difference, mm -hmm. or I couldn't anyway, just with mercury, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe yeah. you could if you're using an electric or something. Like that. Um, I, it, it just kills the fish, yeah. absolutely yeah. kills it. Yeah. I've seen it's it like, on really exactly yeah. the same. Exactly and then the same one you get a lion yeah. fresher, yeah. which you get, I can't remember, is it from April? April to October, you get a, a, a lion fresher every week. Okay. And also, yeah. it's usually Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Just explain like that. that a wee bit more so, for so, people that don't know. So, the fresher, a, a seemingly when, when the dam was put in there, they had to guarantee water. Yes. Like a, a false flood or something. Yeah. yeah. To draw the fish out of the main stem into the lion. Um, so that was way back when that dam was put in, I think in the 50s, I think. Um, and they release water, it runs for around 12, 12 hours. Some, something along those lines, so they'll do like a false speed. Sure. And seemingly when, when the lion gets that, it fishes its socks off. Mm -hmm. But when it hits us, and you'll see it down here, Callum, it's usually yeah. uh, later at night, yeah. uh, um, or in the evening, it just kills the fish. Just fish away. You could be catching fish on a cast line bank, and then this hits. What's happening? No. Oh, yeah. it's rising. That's it. I know. I yeah, it, 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 but it kills it the following yeah, yeah, day yeah, as well. Yeah. When it because it drops back it so fast. Back, aye. Because that know. water's coming out of there, there's not much oxygen yeah, in it, exactly. so it's yeah. really stagnant, yeah, stale yeah, water. Yeah. 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 What about you, Sandy? We were just had a similar problem. Uh, we, we have the hydro board very active uh, and uh, it's fairly predictable, but uh, being predictable doesn't help us any way. You'll find if you have a wee bit tourist run up at Loch Erne, that it is unnaturally high even in times of drought. They hold the money back there by altering the rate of the of, of the lower dam on the on Loch Erne. And they uh, it's money in the bank to them because if there is a demand for the national grid, a royal wedding, big sporting events, Olympics of this and that, and they know that the public is going to be looking at that and you know, they'll have a cup of tea at half time. And the national grid will contact them and say, we anticipate a demand here and then. They say, can you oblige? And they say, absolutely no problem at all. And they take the phone call with one phone and they're looking a fortnight in Bermuda with the other. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know perfectly well uh, that you'll go in the morning and all of a sudden you're running an ice height then, whoop, uh, because they're impounded. Yes. Yes. And then, of course, the other side of that is that when you don't want it, down yeah, it comes yeah, yeah. and yeah. it scunners you entirely. Yeah, and absolutely. if you have nice conditions and people getting fish and the week and this or whatever event occurs, uh, you can say, very sorry gentlemen, they're very fish in two, three days time, but you know, if you've got something better to do, I uh, suggest you go and do that. Yeah, if you get yeah. hot in the meantime. Yeah. Uh, we've met with them, they're courteous uh, and approachable and uh, uh, all the rest of it, but the answer is no, we're empowered to do that, we can do that, I'm very sorry gents, but uh, no deal. Yeah, I'm nice to Turbines are the most work, of course, of our Archimedes group, oh, our yeah. that our smokes have to try and negotiate. With difficulty. Well, I'm more concerned about the adults that drop down the way yeah. and uh, they'll probably get chopped up in the time. Yeah. And, yeah. Juveniles, they say, they can cope with it. Uh, they say it. But at the end of the day, to the I've been enough research done on that too. Mm -hmm. Also, and I think, I mean, right this moment, we know for a fact that we need every single smoke to the sea. But the the shepherd is yeah, yeah. absolutely there, are like lumps of gold in that. Oh yeah, that's yeah. the way I see it. I've well, always seen it in the so, last twenty yeah, years. Well, the, 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 the north and south Esk used to ban fishing of any nature with the smoke smoke not my yeah, case. Sure, yeah, yeah, uh, Because the you know, the yeah. dams, and you sometimes see an adult coming back, and we've been out to sea and put on. A lot of pounds, and if they're in a shape and jaw, so which is right, right, so 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 right, so
So is there anything, I mean, thinking about that, is there any way that you could possibly uh, maybe net them and take them past that water code, that um, no, problem it's, area? It's been discussed. Mm -hmm. um, in an ideal world, we'd have proper lead gates, we'd have yeah, a yeah. small screen on it and deflect them. And uh, water, of course, to take them down. The yes. Body there, yes. But, but if you're over abstracting, you could potentially trap small any queer yes. in the main body of the river if you don't. If the water's going down one way, then it should be going down the other So we need to, we're, we're working on it. Yeah. We yeah. are working on it. Yeah. Watch this space. Well, good, good. I'm glad to hear it. I must say, I'm glad to hear that. When it comes to catching salmon, uh, I got my very first salmon when I learned uh, doing it. Cracking method of catching fish. Toby. Toby. Huh? Toby. Toby. Toby was the first one. Toby yeah. or not Toby? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, this is the Toby. question. March the 15th, 1975. Oh, well, I, I, I don't know. Well, interestingly, 1975 was my first one in the spay and mm -hmm. on the fly. But I got my first one in 1971 on the Yugi, yeah, yeah. on the worm, mm -hmm. on to total work, absolute work. Just chucked it in and hoped for the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was it. that was it. All right. mm -hmm. um, so, speaking about these lures mm -hmm. and different things, mm -hmm. um, in your opinion, uh, I know the fly, fly only thing we, we talked about, mm -hmm. but if you were fishing the fly, Tony, mm -hmm. and you had only Three flies no. to put in your box. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> let, the, let the cat out of the bag and no lion, because I know you've lied so much about this oh, before. Oh, gee whiz. I'm about to catch oh, a man with this. I'd need five. You'd need five? I'd need five, yeah. I'd need five. Um, I'd need five. The gilly. The gilly. Is, yeah, that's, 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 that's your famous one. one. Yeah, that's it. Got them in there. Oh, ah, that's good. Then what? What is your name? Fish should come up and jump in the wind. Oh, yeah, Sometimes there's other ones in there. But I'm in the open. Um, yeah, so the gilly, Willie Gun. Yeah, a good old is, is, is favourite. Got, yeah. got to be there. Um, a, a fly I have called the Hellraiser, mm -hmm. um, which uh, I Talked about a lot, but uh, not many people have seen it. Sure. Sandy, Sandy Smith. Smith. Aye. Yeah. He's seen it. He's seen it. He's seen it. He's seen it. I probably know it. Remember no, no, because he, he, he took it. Out. He took it in a five fish one morning. Mm. Uh, um, let's be high. But uh, the Hellraiser. The MYOFB. The MYOFB. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah. stands for? Yeah, well, I'm not going to say And then, and then uh, the Executioner. The Executioner. Right. I got my biggest one in an Executioner. Biggest UK fish. Right. Number eight Executioner. Great fly. fly. Really good fly. Yeah. It's tied by, uh, originated by Bob Johnston. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Easter yeah. Elkis. Yeah, yeah. Tied yeah. by his daughter. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so, well, did, it, was it, was it, did it come off the. What's the fly? If you go back, the old flies up there. Was it not a bit croy fancy? Bit croy fancy. Yeah. And that's, that's what the that's executioners what come from. Pretty much similar. like that. Yeah. It wasn't quite the same, but it definitely came through that yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Look at yourself. Well, yeah. Three flies. What three you flies. Come on, well, give, give, give I've had a big yellow fly for the spring. Oh, aye. aye. Um, it works really well for me. And tube fly or just a, it's a tube, a ah, okay. copper tube, fishing mm -hmm. off an intermediate. Aye. And, and it all came about because people used to catch salmon on yellow fly and seas. Aye. So I fish it square. Aye. And that's why. Mm -hmm. And the other ones are Tony's flies. Tony's fishing to a yellow fly. I've had some big fish on the ground. Oh, everybody's had big fish. Oh, I know. Aye. It's a good fly. Sandy, what about you? Well, I suppose you can't go wrong with a witty gun uh, in its various uh, forms. Yeah. A stoat's tail mm -hmm. uh, and a sunray. Aye. Uh, I mean, uh, I'd like to have another, maybe a hitch. Uh, yeah. fun. I do have somewhere, and you probably want to censor this, uh, 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 lots of flies which uh, are, are mislead, but I, I hope to find. Um, and some of them have different colours of wings. Uh, some of them are black coloured, and some of them are blonde and there's a bit of red. 
as well. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. uh, it's quite successful, mm -hmm. but may I mention I have great fun gathering these <laughs> with, with materials over a number of years, uh, and I keep them very much to myself. Absolutely. 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 Yep. Well, my, my, my selection would be very much the same as yourself. Execution of Polycon, and I do like the, the Sunray Shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, it serves them all. Ah, it definitely does. And, but, but the hitch fly, and I'm interested you said the hitch, Sandy, mm -hmm. because uh, I didn't see so many people fishing hatch, but I've fished it for a lot of years, I have to say. It sometimes does the trick. Oh, aye, aye, aye. 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 They used it a lot in the Isla. Uh, okay. Between the tea and the River Isla. Micro tubes right on the hatch. Mm -hmm. Just a good yeah. work, and it's amazing what you can see coming up by tomorrow. It'll work very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's one at the back that usually comes forward when it takes the light on the line. Aye, droppers, Dad. You ever fish a dropper? Oh. And a, and a big river like this? Oh, the implement of the, the devil. Implement of the, the implement of doom. Wow. <laughs> okay. It's on the speed, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Always. Aye. 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 I hated it, don't I? Hate it. But you know why I'm going to hate it? Because as a girl, yeah, there's yeah. nothing worse than having uh, waiting for a fish to come to the net yeah. and this thing trailing yeah, a bit yeah, behind. Yeah, yeah. And half the people that, that, that were taking yeah, the fish yeah, to the net hadn't a clue who to take it to the net. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I don't know. I don't fish there on Tony's beat one day. I got out from you. That's right. I don't know. Look up. Is that a knife? And I lost both of that. And the girls was coming in thick, eh? Just watch it. That, oh, that island pull them in. You used to watch them. You used to watch them following the fly around, and if you had somebody with a dropper, and you'd see this string of girls coming around following you. Oh, jeez. Just one of you. Just one of you, you know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've seen two take a few times. Mm -hmm. So it's a big river, guys. Mm -hmm. Fishing it in general. There's quite a lot with the with the standing methods of fishing now. Would you be are you in favour of the square casting, stripping, speeding the fly up, that the uh, ground? Depends on what it is. I mean, it, but I've seen it run. Oh, one of my other favourite flies, Gary Bell. Yes, a blended wing. Ah, it's always red. Ah, I would fish that up in a new one, and uh, it works really well in the warmer water. Mm -hmm. But scandy lines. The upper integrated ones are mm -hmm. now, you know, it's mm -hmm. still much that. Uh, yep, but I like the shooting heads and mm -hmm. the scandy methods. Yes, cross them. Down Fish and fail with 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 This is all good stuff for youngsters looking at this. Yeah. This is all good stuff because it's all well, methods that that um, some, sometimes people are sort of guarded about their methods and, look, and people look at, at least at this video, I think, mm -hmm. and they're looking for you guys that are real experts on it, you know, mm -hmm. so they're looking to get a wee tip or two out of it. I know that our story is always telling a total rubbish. We're a smaller river, but big enough at times, yeah. and there's no doubt that modern tackle that surpasses anything that we used to have. Uh, you go back to the stuff we used to use, and you know, it was heavy and cumbersome, and you're limited in what you can do, but you can do anything. And uh, you get guys who are maybe new to the sport, and uh, with a bit of coaching, they're more than competent. Uh, and uh, it allows you to try different things. Uh, I mentioned the collie dog before, and when you're stuck uh, and not much happening, I uh, mind one day last season, uh, this nice old chap, and he was not in the first flush of youth, and a bit. Uh, uh, Find it very difficult. So, but I said, there's a fish line exactly there, and if you hang around, you'll see it. And I said, Have you ever tried a collie dog? I said, Well, look. And I showed him, they'd throw it on. I said, Oh, boy, that's ridiculous. He said, Well, do it, please. Uh, anyway, I left him to do that, and I went to see somebody else, and uh, half mile on the phone went, Oh, no! He's like, he'd never had a go, but he'd have done the, the right tackle to do it. And that sometimes he said, you know, the surface like that. I said, I can't believe it. Now, the kept with her now is just so much better. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. Some magic. Mm -hmm. Can't fish a line. Green one, chain one, and 
I remember the first plastic line I seen. Uh, it was on my, my grandfather being a gilly before me. Um, used to get given, like, like, yep. like we do now, you get given stuff from various manufacturers. And my grandfather had been given this new plastic coated float and fly line. Anyway, I had a little fly reel and I fancied I'd have some of this <laughs> plastic fly line, so I cut it in half. <laughs> it the well, my guy. grandfather, I remember best, please. But he never ever really told me off. He would just say, no, you mustn't do that. <laughs> I was going to be like a golden child or something like But uh, I, uh, uh, the modern lines are just oh, yeah. amazing. There's hardly a bad line out there now, mm -hmm. you know? whereas you go way back, you, know, yeah. you have maybe one or two ah, that good. For sure, for sure. I think that uh, being involved in that kind of tackle yeah, stuff yeah, myself, yeah. it goes back to the 90s, I think, mm -hmm. was kind of where it all changed. The Wolf. When the Lee Wolf came in, came in, came in as, a, as a spay line. Yeah, right. yeah, and, and that was an eye opener. And then that, 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 that job came out with that carbon line. Oh, that, 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 was, a, that, was, a proper, that was a proper <laughs> line. That's <laughs> still a proper <laughs> line. I've still got uh, a dozen uh, of them. Aye. Uh, 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 enough, I was speaking Magic. to the manufacturer of that mm -hmm. yesterday, yeah. uh, two days back, yeah. and I said, can you make me one? Ah, this is all so I got have one or two made up, but they are they are really good, oh. yeah, really really good. And that just came from understanding yeah, physics, yeah, yeah, physics yeah, are casting yeah. and mm -hmm. just putting the weight in the right place yeah. and the way they went. You know? So no, it has. It's made it's made fishing so much easier, mm -hmm. I think, for people. You know, generally speaking, yeah. you can take youngsters on. It's a nice short headed line, oh. yeah. and, and you can have them cast it.